I realized also early that if I was going to do this um, and spend my kind of life doing this, then, you know, it needs to be for like the pure love of music. Hi, this is Dagny. I'm here in Berlin uh, visiting Diffus, uh, right in the middle of our European tour. Uh, so we thought we'd have a little chat about my music. When did you discover your love for music? My musical journey started already when I was uh, growing up because I come from a musical family. But it took me quite a long time before I realized that I wanted to to work with music or create music. Around my teenage years, I discovered uh, the acoustic guitar and fell absolutely in love with songwriting first. And then I realized I had an even bigger love for performing and being on stage. Did your parents have influence on your music? I think like the most valuable like lesson I learned from growing up in a musical family is just to have a very realistic view on what it is to be a musician. It's going to be a proper like roller coaster. It's going to be highs and lows. I realized also early that if I was going to do this, um, and spend my kind of life doing this, then, you know, it needs to be for like the pure love of music. Even if I'm not aware of it myself, I always seem to be drawn to things that are very like rhythmical. And, and I think that's from like listening to Bossa Nova, like all of my upbringing, basically. How did London affect your music? When I came to London, I just realized how incredibly many talented people are out there and who's willing to, you know, do the work and, and go out and gig seven nights a week. I felt like I, I grew a lot those years in London, just getting to experiment and, and write a lot and really like get good at your craft. You know, having time to, to learn and grow and fail and try again, that was really like valuable. How did you process your overnight success? Suddenly we, I was like, flying out to LA and New York and meeting labels. And it was, it really was like a big shift overnight. At that time, um, I had already been, you know, gigging and writing for like a decade. I guess I just thought it was really exciting. Then it's just important to know also when to take a day off and just let everything sink in a little bit. Why do you write so many songs for an album? I remember meeting an artist back home in Norway and he had just released an album with 12 songs and I said to him, okay, so how many songs did you write for this album before you picked the 12? And he said, I think I, I think I wrote 13. And I was like, what? I think when I did my first album, I wrote like 200 songs just to pick my like 12 favorites. Part of what I love about doing music is also that time where you, you just get a space to like create or a space to go on tour where you don't write music for months. And, And then suddenly you're in the studio and you're writing every day. And uh, I love that kind of contrast and all those different stages of, of um, being an artist, I guess. How did you come up with the concept of your last record? It's interesting because I actually remember having a conversation with someone 10 years ago, uh, being like, okay, one day I'm going to make an album that's like the light and the dark. It was important that it didn't just feel like a collective of songs, but that there was some kind of underlying story. The whole thought of like, you know, meeting someone who's a stranger to you and then, you know, you fall in love and you become maybe a couple and then you become, you go from strangers to lovers. And then, you know, if things don't work out, then you break up. Then suddenly it's like that person just completely disappears from your life and you kind of go from lovers back to strangers again. Like there's something that kind of like brutal about that, but there's also something really beautiful about knowing that you can meet people and fast forward three years, they're such a big part of your life or an important part of your life. Why do you enjoy playing live so much? If I wasn't able to play live, then, then I don't think I would have the same motivation to be in music. That's just the honest truth. I mean, I love creating, but a big part of it is coming out. I'm a pretty energetic person. <laughs> You can probably tell. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for me, going up on a stage, you can just like completely let loose for an hour and a half. That vibe and that um, energy is just unlike anything else. So, um, yeah, I really love playing live. How did you cope with the cancellation of live performances during the pandemic? You know, there was definitely ups and downs during Corona, I think, for everyone. 
uh, I felt like, you know, I managed to adapt to the situation and and just um, for a moment accept that there was kind of out of my control, I guess. It was almost like I was forced to just go into the studio and f focus on that. And a big part of, you know, Strangers Lovers, my album, was was because of us having time to be in the studio and work on the music and the visuals. And, and I think it was a reminder when everyone got to go on tour again or go to a show, it was like, I'm never taking any of it for granted. Um, and you can tell that the musicians and the audience have like an extra vibe now when we can finally go to shows again. How do you look back on the last year being back on stage? It was good to weirdly get like a closure on the album because I felt like we released the album but then we weren't able to play it and so I felt like it was difficult to kind of move forward with something new before I'd kind of been able to live with the album and play it and meet the people that have been listening to it. It's been really good to be reminded uh, of that feeling and uh, now we only have three shows left until we have a break until next summer. So now I'm just gonna take everything in for these last three shows and try and bring that energy into the studio uh, when I start working on my second record. How was your show in Berlin? I loved it. I loved it. Some of the people have had the tickets for two years. So um, I was really happy to see that people showed up. This is the first time I do like my own show and it was really great. They were like singing and uh, people were traveling from all over the country. Uh, so I got to spend like an hour and a half just chatting with everyone in the merch after, which was really nice. So I hope that it won't be another four years until I come back. What are your next steps and what do you wish for? First and foremost, just going back into the studio and making a second record and kind of uh, really spend time thinking about what I want my next kind of album to feel like. Uh, so I'm actually really excited about that because now we've been touring a lot. So it feels like a good time to, to take a little touring break and just focus on the music. Now, having done, you know, these European shows, that's been such a great reminder that there is also, you know, a whole world outside of um, Norway where we've been spending so much time in the last few years. So that's made me really, really excited about um, hopefully tour more outside of Norway and uh, meet the fans and just see even more of the world, I guess. Yeah, so that's kind of what I hope for.